Hello everyone, I'm Kate. This is my first foray into making YouTube videos. I hope you enjoy it. Today I'll be using some techniques I learned from one of John Muir Law's classes to paint a California tiger salamander. The reference picture is from CaliforniaHerbs.com. I'll put the link to that, John Muir Law's classes, and some of the supplies I use in the description below. To begin this piece, I'm using a cheap sketchbook and mechanical pencil with 2H lead. My initial marks are gesture lines that capture the general position of the animal. Then, I lightly sketch in larger forms like the head and body. I try to keep my marks light, but there are plenty of chances for me to refine my sketch later, so I don't worry about it looking messy. At this stage, I want to be really critical of position and proportions. At this point, it's really easy to change or fix anything. Once I'm happy with my initial sketch, I start to really define the lines I want to keep. I might add in wrapping lines around certain areas for reference. When I'm done, I take my eraser and clear away any excess lines. Then, I roll it over the entire drawing to lighten the lines I do want to keep. Sorry about my head, I will be putting the camera lower next time to avoid that. <laughs> to create a more defined look, I'm going to go over my sketch with an HV pencil. You could use a 2B pencil here too. The main idea is to create a bold line, but not use a soft enough lead that will smudge if you brush your hand over it. You can use this step to alter some of the lines and details. It's not your last chance to do this, but it gets a lot harder as you go on. Now that I've completed my sketch, I need to transfer it to paper I can paint on. To do this, I'm using tracing paper and a colored pencil. I recommend only tracing the really important lines and using your paints to recreate those details. You should also use a light colored pencil to trace your sketch. That way, you can put a darker color over it and see where you've transferred it. Once my tracing is complete, I tape the tracing paper in place over my watercolor paper. You should tape the watercolor paper down too, so you don't have to worry about bumping it out of place. Now I'm going to lay my transfer paper between the two with the dark side down and lightly draw over the sketch. Now that my salamander is transferred onto watercolor paper, I'm going to start planning out how I want to paint this. The first thing I'll do is touch up my sketch with the 2H pencil. Then I'll take the masking fluid and apply it to the areas with yellow spots or shiny white reflection points. I've tried a few types of masking fluid that ripped my paper when I removed it. Right now I'm using Dr. P.H. Martin's Frisket Mask Liquid. As long as the paper is dry when you apply it, the fluid dries fully before you paint over it and the paint dries completely before removing it, you shouldn't have a problem. I use a hairdryer to make sure everything is really dry before moving on. Once I am absolutely sure that that masking fluid is dry, I will get out my watercolors. I use a custom palette that can be bought on John Muir Law's website. It's my first set of high quality watercolors and they make a big difference. The first thing I do is use some Shadow Violet by Daniel Smith to map out the values in my sketch. Don't be afraid to put in dark pigment. You can use a wet brush to come back and fade it out. Now that my shadow layer is dry, I'm going to come in with some undersea green and paint washes over the head, legs, and the end of the tail. I don't want to have any harsh lines, so I'm going to make sure I fade these out with a wet brush. <music> 
To add a bit of warmth to the tone, I'm going to glaze a light wash of raw umber on the snout, flank, legs, and underside of the tail. I really have to be careful with this next step, since overdoing it would cover up the previous washes. To put in the main color of the salamander, I'm going to apply a light wash of neutral tint. The pigment should be most intense where you see the darkest parts on the reference picture. I'm going to start my wash in the middle of the body and bait it out into the extremities. Make sure the layers below are completely dry so they don't mix. I'm going to start off using a very diluted pigment, but once my initial wash is in, I like to add more to the darkest areas. You may notice I take a dry brush and lift out some of the color on the top of the back. That creates a highlight. You could use diluted white gouache to create a similar effect. Now that that's dry, I'm going to remove my masking fluid. Some people use an eraser for this, but I prefer to use my finger. I try to rub it in one direction so that the dried paint on top gets rolled up and doesn't smudge the paper. Next, I'm going to paint the spots on the salamander with a wash of Hansa Yellow Light. Note that on the reference, this isn't a really bold yellow so I don't want to overdo it. When I come back to shade these yellow areas later, I'll use a mix of Hansa Yellow Light and Shadow Violet to create a darker, desaturated yellow. Okay, so here's where I get to do a lot of detail work. You'll notice that the first thing I do is fade out those white highlights I made with the masking fluid. In retrospect, I think they were fine, but they looked a bit too harsh for me at the time. I'm going to use the yellow-violet mix to shade and shape my spots. I am also using Payne's Gray to bring out shapes on the side, tail, head, and limbs. I paint the eye with Serpentine Genuine and define the mouth, nostrils, and toes with Bloodstone. I know it's tempting to outline certain features with dark pigments and detailed brushes, but I am working on creating differences in value and tone to do that work for me. The last step is probably the most fun. I'm going to take a detailed brush loaded with white gouache and add in my highlights. Salamanders have really moist shiny skin and the bright white makes it look wet. Next time I'm going to try and make my brush strokes match the contour of the salamander's body to give it more shape. Overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you want to see more of my work you can subscribe to this channel or follow my Instagram. Thank you for watching.